Okay, we have here another integral from the MIT integration B 2010. This was problem 15. We have the integral from one to infinity, dx over x squared plus one, all squared. Okay, you may notice this looks a lot like the integral for arctan, uh, where we have x squared plus one in the denominator. It's just that it's squared, but I think we're still gonna try the same technique and make a trig substitution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, we're gonna call x equal to tan of t. And then our dx is going to be just secant squared t dt. We also can just solve for t if we want. So we can say t is equal to uh, inverse tan or arctan of x. Now, if we look at arctan of infinity, that's going to happen when t is pi over 2. Let's evaluate 1. Arctan of 1 is going to be just pi over 4. Then our dx is going to be this thing. So we're going to have our secant squared t dt. And then here for... So x squared plus 1 is going to be tan squared t plus 1, and this is all squared. And the nice thing is we have this identity for this expression here. This is the same thing as secant squared of t. So we have secant squared t squared. This is actually going to be just secant to the fourth t in the denominator. But then we have secant squared t over secant to the fourth t. We can do some cancellation. We'll cancel two of those with two of these. And then we have just secant squared t in the denominator. But secant squared t is the same thing as 1 over cosine squared t. So because we have 1 over cosine squared t in the denominator, when we rewrite it, we're going to have, this is going to be just cosine squared of t. Next, what I'm going to do is use another identity over here on cosine squared t to reduce the, um, to reduce the power. So we have the formula that cosine squared t is the same as 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2t. And so now we'll just integrate this thing. So the integral of 1 half is going to be 1 half t. Then here, um, integral of cosine 2t is going to be sine 2t. But we need to bring a 2 out in the denominator. We already have a half, so it's a half times a half, 1 fourth. And we're just evaluating this from pi over 4 to pi over 2. So let's plug all this stuff in and see if we can finish this thing off. So pi over 2 times a half here is going to be pi over 4. Here, pi over 2 times 2 is going to be pi. Sine of pi is 0, so we'll skip that term. We'll move on to evaluating pi over 4. Then pi over 4, half times pi over 4 is going to be pi over 8. Pi over 4 in the sine term, okay, 2 times, sin, two times pi over 4 is pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this is going to be 1 times a fourth, and we're going to have just a 1 fourth there. And then just for simplification, let's get a common denominator here. So I'm going to write pi over 4 as 2 over 8, and then so 2 pi over 8 minus pi over 8 is going to be pi over 8. Distributing this minus in here, we're just going to have minus 1 fourth, and that's it. Good problem from MIT 2010. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.